Welcome back. Under Python basics, we are talking about Python tokens. In the previous session, we already discussed about keywords, identifiers, and special symbols. In this session, we learn about the remaining tokens, that is, literals and operators. Before starting, please make a note. In Python, everything is object. So you take a number, you take a string, you take a function, you take anything in Python, it is an object. And objects are instances of a class. Okay, if you take a particular object, it may be an instance of a specific class. See, for example, You take a number 5. This is an integer object and it is an instance of integer class. See, actually, each object is associated with a value, type, that is, it belongs to which class and address or identifier, we can call it. And to find the value, type, and address, we are having three important built in functions. To print the value, we can use the print function. To identify the class of the object, we use type. And to find the unique identifier or the address, we can use id. See, for example, you can print the value of 5. Of course, 5 value directly can be printed. And you can find the type of the number 5. And you can also find the address associated, that is id associated with pi. Okay. See, I told you now, id, it uh, return the identity of an object, unique identifier we call it. And in C Python, it uses objects memory address. That id is nothing but objects memory address. So here with 5, there is a value associated, there is a type associated, and there is an address associated. So, 5 value is 5, and it is an object of integer class, and this is the memory address. So, please make a note of it, my dear friends. So, even if you take any fixed value like 5 or 5.4, any fixed value, in Python, it is not just a number, it is an object. See, in other programming languages, suppose if you take uh, uh, C programming, if you take 5, 5 is just a fixed value, a constant value. There is no memory associated with it. But here, when you take 5, there is a memory associated with it. There is a uh, class associated with it. It is an object. It is an instance of a particular class. Okay. So, instead of 5, suppose you want to experiment, you can experiment, uh, say, with some floating number. say 5.6. You can take any other number, sir. So, here it is an object of float class and this is the memory address. So, please make note of it. So, we do not have uh, just constants. So, the constant values which we use, there are actually objects. Am I clear? So, before talking about literals, please make a note of it. Of course, we discuss this more in detail when you talk about data types and variables. Okay, but before talking about literals, please note that in Python everything is object. So we are talking about literals. Okay, the next type of tokens, literals. Now, what are these literals, sir? Literals are fixed values. Okay, like numbers we seen. Okay, or you can take string literals, or you can take boolean values. Okay, etc. They are the fixed values directly used in Python code. And importantly, these literals are identified as tokens during lexical analysis. And these tokens are subsequently transformed into objects within the Python runtime environment. So, if you use a number, okay, during the lexical analysis, they are identified as tokens. Tokens means what, sir? Smallest logical units which are having meaning 
Am I clear? So they are the smallest logical uh, units which are having meaning and they are converted to objects. That is exactly what happens during the runtime. Am I clear? And in Python, we are having different types of literals. We have numerical literals. We have Boolean literals, string literals and special literals. So let us talk about these literals one after the other. So we start with numeric literals. So under numerical literals, uh, we are having the integer literals. We have the float literals and we have the imaginary literals. Okay. Of course, uh, even Boolean also considered as numerical literals by some people, but we are writing them as separate, uh, separate values here, my dear friends. Okay. Please make note of it. Now, let us talk about this integer literal. So, what is this integer literal, my dear friends? It should contain at least one digit. So, one or more digits and no decimal points, sir. It should not contain any decimal point. It can be either positive or negative. If you don't give any sign, by default, it is positive. Okay. For negative, you have to keep a negative sign. Default sign is positive. Commas or blanks are not allowed within an integer literal. Okay. Now, the default integer literal is decimal integer literal. But we also have other type of integer literals like binary, octal and hexadecimal. Okay. And for binary, it is prefixed with 0, either small b or capital B. For octal, it is prefixed with 0, small o or capital O. And hexadecimal, it is prefixed with 0, small x, yeah, capital X. Okay. So, let us explore this, my dear friends. So, this is an integer literal. No commas or blank places are allowed. But, you can actually use underscores. See, for example, this number is 10 lakhs. So, for more readability, we can use this underscore in between the digits and Python interpreter ignores this. See, for example, if you print this, this uh, it is actually decimal format. If you print this, Python interpreter ignores this underscore. See, generally this underscore are used for readability and if you are having a very, very long integers uh, like long integer or memory address, if you want to print those values, okay, for readability, we are going to use this underscores, okay. See, normally when you print it, the underscores are ignored. So, it is actually 10 lakhs. Am I clear? So, this is the decimal format. So, hope you understand decimal format. Now, what I do is I take a small number so that you understand all the uh, three different forms like binary, octal and hexadecimal. So even if small number also you can print it, it will print as 100. Okay. Now, if you want to know the binary format of this number, we have this function called binary function simply bin and write down that number. So you get the binary equivalent of that number. Okay. And if you use Oct function, if you use oct function, we are going to get the octal equivalent of that number. And if you use hex function, we are going to get the hexadecimal equivalent of this number 100. So, let us run this my dear friends. So, you see 100 in decimal format. And this is 100 in binary format and it is prefixed with 0b. And it is 100 in octal format that is base 8 system. It is prefixed with 0o. And it is 100 in hexadecimal base 16 system. And it is prefixed with 0x. See if you want you can try this. Print 0b. See, when it is in binary format, you can you only use the digits 0, 1. Please note that. Some people write 24 and you will get error. Don't do that because in binary format, you can only use 0, 1. 
See, if you want, you can just try this. It says, sorry, you said binary and you are giving digit 2. What is this? Okay. So, don't do such mistakes. Sir. Yeah. Now, what is it? See, by default, you will get, uh, when you print this, uh, you know, uh, binary number, binary number or octal number or hexadecimal number, by default, you are going to get the decimal equivalent of that. Okay. Decimal equivalent of that. Suppose you want to get, you know, octal equivalent of that, you can use oct on that. So, what happens? First of all, it will be converted to decimal and then it is converted to octal. So, octal equivalent of that, you are going to get. I am sorry. Uh, you know, matching parenthesis you have to keep. So, you can get the octal equivalent of this binary format. Okay. Please note it. Okay. We can explore, I mean, uh, experiment with that later on. First, let us see uh, all the different format. So, 0, capital O you can use, small o you can use. And octal means you can use digits from 0 to 7. You can write any number, 3. Okay. 7 also can be used. So, the equivalent of decimal number you are going to get. This is octal number, the equivalent decimal form you are going to get. Okay. <clears throat> then we can also try this hexadecimal. Hexadecimal means base 16. So, 0 to 9, then A, B, C, D, E. F also. 15, na? like that. So, you can try this 0. You can use small x or capital X. You can say 1 capital E. See, what is this number if you want to uh, calculate? It is like, you know, 1 into 16 plus, because here it is uh, for this, uh, you know, units place is 1 and then it is, because it is in hexadecimal, this will be 16 number. Sorry for that, 16. So, 1 into 16. And A, A means 10, 10 into 1. So, that is 16 plus 10, you get 26. So, for this, the answer will be 26. You can check this. Even if you want this, uh, you know, octal into decimal format, you can try this. Okay. So, here it is. <laughs> so, here it is 1, it is 8, it is 8 square and it is 8 cube. So, you have to do 8 cube into 2 plus 8 square into 3 plus 8 into 4 plus 1 into 7. Then you are going to get this 1, 2, 5, 5 answer. You can verify that, my dear friends. Okay. You can verify that. Okay. So, if you want, I will just verify here itself. So, we want. 8 cube, okay, into 2 plus 8 square into 3 plus 8 into 4 plus 1 into 7. So, you can check this value here. Oh, there is some mistake. Oh, there is extra star value kept. So, this value, so this is the decimal equivalent of this octal number. Okay. So, that is 1255. Is that clear? So, hope you understand what are this, uh, you know, integer literals. Regular format is decimal format. You can use either binary, octal or hexadecimal formats and we can also make use of these functions like bin actually binary function to convert this number in decimal format to binary format. We can use oct function that is octal function to convert the number in decimal format to octal format. We can use hex function to convert the number in decimal format to hexadecimal format. So, the next one is Floating point literal. See, floating points can be expressed in two ways. One is fractional format. There is a regular one we know. There is a fractional format. Okay. So, we have integer part followed by a decimal point followed by a fractional part. 
then there is a scientific notation so what is the scientific notion notation sir here uh, we can have a real number or integer suppose you can have 3.56 followed by e which denotes the exponent and then we have optional plus or minus sign see plus you don't have to write minus you have to mention then the exponent exponent will be integer sir so here the exponent will be integer value okay so here you can have exponent say 3 so what is this number actually equivalent sir this number is actually equivalent to 3.45 into n power 3 okay but we return that in the uh, you know scientific format is that clear so you get this answer 3450 okay that is the idea so you see this 345 not 0 it is 6 na so 6 whatever is there the same value you are going to get 3456 so this is your scientific format and this is your fractional format okay both are your uh, you know fractional literals see actually complex number is available let me show you what is a complex number so we can have a real part real part you can have any number real number plus imaginary part so imaginary part you can have something like 5.6 j but when you use lexical analysis 3.456 is a token plus is a token then this imaginary value is a token so here the entire complex literal we cannot have sir because complex number is combination of literals it is a combination of literals so here we have a, a, a real or integer uh, literal then we have an operator then we have imaginary literal so we can have imaginary literal imaginary number is literal sir so that is a token literal in the sense here we are saying literal means which is a token during the lexical analysis you can find this as a single token because lexical analysis tokenize your code you it divides your code into small tokens okay the smallest logical units which are having meaning okay so an imaginary literal eats a complex number with a real part 0, 0.0 so we just consider that imaginary part as uh, whatever is available real part is zero for this so all these are examples for you know imaginary literals is that clear then we have this boolean literals see we have two boolean values one is true the other one is false so during the lexicon analysis this is a token this is also considered as a token boolean literals are written as true or false even one zero also you can use both are tokens okay then there is a special uh, you know data type called non data type okay which is called special data type okay and none represent absence of the value none means absence absence of the value and it is uh, starting with capital n sir capital n o n e okay and this is also a literal so uh, during the lexical analysis if you are having none in your code none is completely considered as a one token so it is a none literal clear then we have this string literals see string literals represent sequence of characters enclosed within either single quotes or double quotes even triple single quotes or yeah, triple double quotes but please note whatever quotes you start with you have to end with the same quotes that is the same type of quote used to start a string must be used to terminate it suppose if you start a string with single quote you have to end with a single quote if you start a string with double quote you have to end with a double quote if you start with a triple quote then you have to end with a triple quote okay and generally uh, together with this uh, strings we use this escape sequences okay so that they'll uh, change the meaning of that string okay so you can have this is a string within single quote right and we can have 
this is a string now it is in double quotes within the double quotes and actually the triple quoted string can span over the multiple lines see if it is a single or double quoted string it must appear on the same line see for example if it is a double quoted string if you span over two lines immediately it will say error what is error unterminated string literal so please be careful single quoted or double quoted strings they must span in a over a single line so it should be completed in a single line okay and if it is a triple quoted string either you can use triple single quote or triple double quote so it is trying to help us we are not interested this is string with in triple single quotes it can span over multiple lines and you have to end with same single triple quotes am i clear and if you observe see this is actually backslash n new line so you get that new line automatically if you print it see if you print this okay because uh, as i told you we are getting both uh, interpreter mode as well as script mode you are directly getting the output but if you write in the script mode okay you can see this this is a string within triple single quotes it can span over multiple lines see here first we have a new line so here you see in the new line it is printed am i clear and again here you are getting into the new line so the new line is printed is that clear so that is exactly what going to happen so if you use backslash t what happens there will be a tab between these two fellows is the idea clear so this is about string literals so that is about the literals see actually we are having uh, so many built in data structures Uh, like you know lists sets etc but please note list is not a literal okay it is a combination of literals okay please note that only these are the literals available there is something called bytes bytes literal is possible there is one data structure called bytes the bytes literal is possible but all other fellows they are not uh, you know single literal because list is a combination of literals okay please note now under python tokens the last type of tokens are operators see operators plays very very important role we have a separate topic okay where we explore all the operators in more detailed manner here i'll just tell you what are the operators operators in python are symbols that perform operations on one or more operands so the operands can be values or variables clear now python supports wide range of operators okay for various type of operations like arithmetic operators comparison operators logical operators bitwise operators assignment operators membership operators identity operators ternary conditional operators okay ternary operator or conditional operator so we are going to discuss in detail about the operators their precedence their associativity later on so these are the tokens in python language what do you mean by token smallest logical unit which is having a meaning so during the lexical analysis so the code is divided into tokens so the tokens are the smallest logical units which are having a meaning so this is about tokens